This is gonna be your perfect braking solution to lock up all four tires. Even with 44 inch tires, this is gonna be a great system. Howdy, howdy, it's Dylan with BreakingBulls.com and today we got a lot of stuff to do on the Jeep and we need to get to work. It's crunch time in the shop. We have an event to get to in March. So uh, let's get right to it. We have the entire driver's side of this Jeep to get done, a lower control arm to put on, a pan hard bar to make, a shock tire to be put on, and some brakes to be finished up. We got some cool things that came in the mail. Let's check that out right now. Oh, we got a box in the mail today. I've already opened it up a little bit. Get all this junk out of here. Oh, all right, here she is. This is the Dave Custom Unlimited Dual Diaphragm Brake Booster and Master Cylinder. This setup right here is perfect for one tons. Those with disc brakes on all four corners or drum brakes on the back and discs up front. This is gonna be your perfect braking solution to lock up all four tires. Even with 44 inch tires, this is gonna be a great system. On Dave Custom Unlimited website, you can input the axles you're using and the brakes you're using on all four corners, and they will design a perfect system that will work for your build. Go check them out. Now on a rock crawler, especially one that's gonna be driven on the street, brakes are gonna be one of the most important systems to focus on. I did tons of research online. A lot of the form posts, the old Pirate 4x4 posts, said that a Ram 2500 master cylinder bolted up would work just fine. And then also people said to go ahead and get a, 90, a 1995 YJ brake booster because it is di dual diaphragm but there is modifications to both of those systems to make them fit. The Dave Custom Unlimited Brake Booster Master Cylinder is a direct bolt-on and there shouldn't be any drama. So we're gonna put that on in the next video, but for today, we're gonna jump on over to welding this lower control arm. The lower control arms on this build, I used a 1.75 inch 250 wall DOM tube with a one and a quarter inch outside diameter tube insert, a seven eighths heim joint that's threaded into this tube insert. Now welding is definitely one of my areas that I'm not the best at. I'm much better at figuring out solutions to problems than actually performing the work. But my best tips I can give you from an unprofessional is to make sure you bevel this edge here and kind of roll it down into the gap that it gives you to lay that weld in. Make sure everything is perfectly clean before attempting to weld. And then for me, I like to leave these heims in one just so it doesn't have any chance to warp the threads of the tube insert, which can happen, and two, to prevent any of the BBs from welding to get into those threads causing you an issue. I go ahead and leave that in there, weld it all the way around, not really worrying about too much heat, and then letting it sit and fully cool down before I install it on the vehicle. So the welder I'm using today is a Hobart Iron Man 240 with .035 welding wire. 25%, 75% shielding gas, and my settings are 4.2 for the volts and 50 for the wire feed. Now while we wait for that to cool off, let's go check out what we're gonna do for these shock towers. I'm gonna to show you the passenger side, and then I'm gonna show you the problems with the driver's side we're running into. Now on the passenger side, you can really see how this went together with no particular drama. This is my Woodland Fab shock tower that I created. You can check it out at woodlandfab.com. It is now and available. And we had to cope it to the frame rail here. It's a 17 degree cope we had to do. Uh, just to make sure everything lined up perfectly. But overall, there is no drama on this side. Now, let, let me take you over to the driver's side and show you what we're running into. Now, on the driver's side, we do need to take off the stock uh, shock mount here, but this panhard bar bracket is landing exactly where that shock tower is supposed to go on this side. Luckily, at the top, we do have the, some space here, and it looks like we're gonna be able to slide one of the legs in of the shock tower. Uh, and 
The other problem is if that is possible to just slide one of the legs in of the shock tower in, how are we gonna weld it? <laughs> it's gonna be pretty tricky to weld. So we're gonna have to take a deeper look into that. We gotta get the stock shock mount out of here. Let's do that right now. Lots of things to dodge, but the best way to attack this is just to start. So here we go. All right, I got this stock uh, shock tower out of here. Once this fender well is cut out, I can clean up the rest. But for now, we're gonna put the lower control arm on the frame and the axle. Uh, first, we need to drill out the frame side lower control arm bracket because it's been for a 9 16 bolt, and we're using 5 8 times and 5 8 bolts. All right, it really doesn't look like this air cleaner is gonna work exactly where it's at, so we're gonna have to push it somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other mount off and then try to get the shock tower on there then. Uh, either way, we'll figure it out. All right, so far to get the shock tower on the driver's side, the air box is definitely in the way, so that needs to be relocated. And then I thought these radiator or these grill supports, you can see this one hanging, I thought those were the same distance on each side, and I, I, I thought I could use those as a reference on where the shock tower would be located. But I'm totally wrong. The one on the driver's side is much closer to the fender than the one on the passenger side is. So um, that actually needs to be relocated and adjusted further as well. Just about out of mock-up phase now. This tab is about ready to get tacked on. And then I have my blown out mock-up shock in there. And then my favorite part about this build, I just love the amount of space I have to work on the driver's side. So this bolt right here is a 3 fourths by 10 by 8 bolt. Now I picked up this bolt from Tractor Supply in the hopes it would fit the driver's side steering and I could stack the Himes. This bolt ended up being too long. So I went back to Tractor Supply to get a 3 fourths by 10 by 6 bolt, hoping, hoping it's just long enough to make work. And no, it's too short. I could not make it work. So I decided to order a 3 4 by 10 by 7 bolt because that's the exact one I need. The 3 4 by 10 by 8 bolt was too long and the 3 4 by 10 by 6 bolt was too short. So the 3 4 by 7 bolt has to be right. But when I got it in, it turns out instead of sending me one 3 4 by 10 by 7 bolt, they ended up sending me two bolts that were 3 4 by 10 by 8. So now I need to wait about another week in shipping to get the right bolt in and we gotta pray the right bolt comes in this time let me show you an insert clip right here this is the passenger side steering and you can see this uh, installed right now is a 3 fourths by 10 by 6 bolt it looks good right but the bottom misalignment spacer isn't even on and I'm out of bolt here here is the 3 4 by 10 by 8 bolt. Now I can get both. I can get both of the misalignment spacers on, but I have some of that blank shaft sticking out of the bottom. So even if I wanted to use this bolt and cut it down because it's too long, I can't because that shaft is sticking out the other side, meaning the bolt will not tighten up all of the hind joints stacked on this spindle. Now I do have the shock tower and the shock tab right here located in the right spot and mocked up just perfectly. The first thing I wanna do is get both of these tacked in. And then on this pan hard bar, we need to cut some of this out here so we can get the weld on the bottom of the shock tower. Once that's complete, this piece will be welded back on. It's kind of a, it's kind of a shortcut and a hack, but at the end of the day, it's gonna work just fine. We're gonna get this welded and then we're gonna gusset up this shock tower in a later video. Let's get to that. Right here, I'm just checking the angles on everything, making sure it mirrors the passenger side. And then we're also making sure the shock is in a neutral position and it's not binding in any way at a full bump or any bump at that point. Uh, once I confirm those things, I'll go ahead and tack this on fully like I just did with the shock tower. And then we'll cut off the top of the piece of this panhard bar bracket and we'll get full welds on this thing and kind of close it up. Now this shock here is just a really old blown out shock, actually from the rear of this YJ when I got it. This shock was completely blown out, but it makes it perfect for mock-up because you can open and close it really nicely. And it's about the right height where we need to be. Obviously there's a lot of shaft showing here, but as far as the total length of it, 
It works perfect for mocking things up so we don't damage our air shocks or coilovers if you have those. Everything is looking just perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack this shock tab on fully to the outer seat of his axle. I'm really putting some really nice beefy welds on this, so when I do wet it fully, it doesn't have any opportunity to pull in any sort of direction to kind of pull us off the rock from where we want to be. Now I'm gonna try to test the theory that I might be able to weld this without cutting anything on this Panhard bar. I'm gonna see how much weld we can do. We are going downhill on this weld, so it does make it easier because you can just flow it right down using gravity as your guide. Uh, we'll see how far we can get it. If we can get it just enough, then we don't have to do anything with it. We can just leave it alone, and, um, and then we'll have gussets over here to make sure nothing moves on the shock tower later. Now it did look pretty good. That was the tightest part of that weld. Uh, there's about half of an inch at the bottom that I could not reach. Uh, I just couldn't flow it good enough to get it to reach down there. I believe it's gonna be okay. Let me see if I can get the other side of this. And if I can, with any success, then we, we'll just leave it alone. Just so I don't warp this shock tower in any way, I'm gonna go ahead and weld some of the other side and then we'll let everything kind of cool back down to a normal temperature and we'll try to get that hard to reach place inside of this panhard bracket afterwards. I do appreciate you guys watching the video. We did cover a lot of things here. If you do have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I wanna give a special thanks to Sneevy's Off-Road for providing a lot of out-of-stock parts for this build. I wanna give a shout out to Woodland Fab, which is my fabrication company. You can pick up fenders for TJs, shock towers for your YJ one-ton swap. And then I have 16 other products just about out of R&D. They, those will be listed soon, you can check them out. 14 bolt truss, uh, truss for a JK Dana 44, so on and so forth. I wanna give another shout out to marshfab.com. He provides a lot of Toyota parts. He's a great friend of mine, he's local to me. He helps me out with a lot of, a lot of my issues. Big shout out to Dylan Marsh with marshfab.com. Check out my website, breakingbolts.com. I cover everything rock crawling, Toyotas, off-road, rock crawling, and even overlanding. For now, I'll see you in the next one.